start, everyone. I am presently in an airplane, probably over in the air, which sucks. <laughs> I'm making fun of Indiana. Wink, wink. Um, so, yeah, I got a call from my brother that we needed to go to North Carolina immediately and uh, have to drive my mom to a hospital, and she's probably going to be staying there for a while. So, uh, I will be back on Monday. Uh, sorry, I'll be back. I'll be back on Monday, so I'll be here on Tuesday. Sorry about this. I, I warned you this would happen. I hope that this isn't too perturbing. Today's lesson is relatively easy, mostly from the book. So the book, I think, is relatively well written, as I said before. So again, sorry about this, and I am fairly sure that this will be the only time this will happen this semester. So uh, appreciate your tolerance. So we're going to have to do this on, uh, on a video. Uh, and I can also make the video available to you after class if you have trouble. Uh, following along. So, uh, you know, one thing about these videos, I've been doing this for a while, I've noticed that YouTube's uh, resolution is surprisingly really good. And, uh, you know, you, can, you should be able to follow along with my writing. I've, I've never had a problem with that before. So, and if you do have a problem, you know, if, you, if it's hard to see my writing, then I, I can give you a copy of my notes as well as a, uh, the, like the 5 gig version of the video. That's how big these things are, 5 gigs. Of course, YouTube uh, processes them by some kind of proprietary way that no one really knows how they do it. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, so, chapter one, um, hopefully, uh, I'm trying to gauge the camera's reach anyway. Uh, functions, functions and Differentials. I should speed up the camera while I'm just writing. Why did my S then? That's weird. There we go. Differentials. Functions and differentials. Okay. Your book really goes off on the, some kind of wild tangents in here and tries to over explain things. I don't, I don't think we need to do that. I'm pretty sure you know what a uh, differential is and whatnot, what a function is. Uh, your book spends a lot of time talking about a function that's continuous and versus, you know, segmented. And here's what, here's the thing I can tell you is that in all my scientific understandings, analyses, conference papers, I really can't think of many times where I've seen a function that was discontinuous, it, it, you know, used in some kind of professional setting and some kind of analysis. I've never really seen that. I've seen e to the x, cosine, sine, functions that are continuous. So I don't know why the book really goes off on some great tangent like that. Um, singularities and functions, uh, any type of um, analysis that runs into, any type of scientific analysis that runs into a singularity, and again, your book talks about this ad nauseum. Uh, when there's a singularity in the calculation, usually the calculation's wrong. So that's like this big debate about do black holes exist? I guess they exist, but a lot of people said, well, when you run into a singularity in your math, it's because it's because either we don't understand the physics or the math is wrong. So anyway, you get my point. Uh, the one thing that is important is that we are always dealing with multi variables. So this class as 342, as 346 is, all the calculus is multivariable calc. And I remember uh, many years ago, I was warned by some of the students that another student was going to go to the dean and complain about how there was multivariable calc in 344 or 346, and how I'm not supposed to be teaching multivariable calc because it wasn't required for the class. OK, and no one ever said anything because that's dumb, because let me point this out. PB equals NRT, something that I assume that you learned in high school, and if not freshman chemistry. Let's see, R is a constant, and then that's it. We got four variables. Multivariable calc, well, as soon as we're talking about PB equals NRT, which is a high school subject, we got multivariable, then we do calc, now we got multivariable calc. In other words, we're not avoiding multivariable calculus, but here, and in 342, 346, 
I tell you how to do multivariable count like I'm going to do right now, so no need to completely freak out. Another thing is multivariable count at the level that we do it in this class or, or PKM1, PKM2 is a rather low level. I can show you, and I'm going to show you half of what you need to do in terms of multivariable count right now. It'll only take me a few minutes. Now there's a higher level to it, which you learn about multivariable calc in multivariable calc class in the math department, but that's not what we do here. I don't even remember the, the stuff that we do there. So anyway, all these words don't help. Examples help, right? When it comes to math, examples, examples are fantastic. All right. So uh, we're going to do multivariable calc, and let's start with derivatives, and next time we'll do integrals. Derivatives are easier than integrals. Everyone knows that. Sound like Donald Trump, but <laughs> everyone knows that. Okay, uh, let's. Uh, okay, now this is kind of silly, but you, you, we got to keep, we got to get this kind of stuff straight. That in the book and in regular mathematical mathematics, y is f of x. Yeah, sorry, I don't mean that. It's like a bullet point. Let me make bullet points. I don't mean to put a minus sign there. Y is f of x. All right. So that's why, here's another symbology, just to make sure we're all on the same page. This is standard notation. Uh, y dash is the slope, is the derivative of y, it's a function of x, so it is dy dx. And uh, because I've got this, I've defined f as y, uh, oops, <laughs> I was writing another y, uh, df dx. Okay. And these are all the same. So uh, this gets used interchangeably all the time. I'll, if the book does it, I, I will do it as well. Although I'm going to try in class not to use y's and x's and f's. I'm going to try to use p's, d's, and n's and t's more than I use x's and y's. Um, although I, I won't be able to do that perfectly. OK, another dumb thing. Now this, I almost said it pisses me off, but I can't say that kind of stuff in class. Um, is I noticed that I used uh, this little kind of curly D. All right, so we have in calc we have a regular D, so DF versus this. I noticed that I wrote like a regular D and a, and a, and a fancy D. In calculus, in math class, in the math part, it has meaning. This means that f is a function of x, and this means f is a function of x and y. In other words, this is multivariable calc, and this is single variable calc. Here's the thing that's unbelievably dumb about this, is that they, it doesn't matter. A freaking derivative is a freaking derivative. Who cares if you use a letter d or a slightly swirlier d? I never understood why they thought this was important. It, it's unbelievably dumb. And let me also just stipulate we're going to, everything is going to be multivariable because this is the simplest equation I could ever present to you, and it's multivariable. So we're doing multivariable count. I put everything this way. So anyway, don't flip out about that, but I just want to let you know that that's a thing. It's a dumb thing, but it's a thing. Um, let's see. Um, so just point out, right, that, you know, I can do this. Or I can do this. So this is why the fancy D is um, appropriate. And uh, yeah, so I, so I have three different derivatives I can calculate, so that's why the fancy D is more appropriate. Um, whatever. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so let's review our first semester calc. And again, remember I had that little video uh, linked on the resources uh, section of the website. If you've forgotten all of your basic calc, I'm going to run through this real quick here. I did appreciate the book for doing this, I, and I like the example. I'm actually going to repeat one or two of the examples. Uh, but recall that a derivative, uh, this means, you know, I'm kind of like, this is like a break in my intellectual presentation. Uh, so I do this a lot. Just trying to use the board as much as possible. Okay, the derivative of y is a limb. Of course, it's a function of x. So we're going to have a space in its uh, independent variable, dy dx. 
rise over run, you know that, and that's still the limit. Oh my god, I ran out of memory delta three delta x to zero of okay, y of x plus delta x minus y of x over delta x. Okay, so again that I see that and I want to fall asleep because that's you know unbelievably boring um, high school stuff, right? Um, but the, the book gives a couple of examples, and I'm going to repeat one of them because I, I just kind of liked it, just to make sure we're all on the same page. No reason not to go slow. Uh, let me also point out that in any graph, that this, of course, rise over run is a slope. And, and here's another example of where I'm going to differ from the book. Is the book, I, I, I really thought the book, I was very impressed with the book, but it doesn't do enough actual chemical examples uh, a couple examples that have a relevant in biology and physics as well. So here's an example. Uh, and you know, for a homework, what I can do is I will give you some data that my group is, my research group uses. Okay, so let's say that you've got a biological species that's fluorescent. And so that's why I'm writing the letter I. Um, it fluoresces with some intensity. And what you do is you titrate in a quencher and you measure that intensity as a function of the addition of quencher. Um, so, so the addition of quencher will be the independent variable, this will be the dependent variable. Uh, obviously at zero quencher, uh, you would have 1.0, I0 over I0 would be 1.0. And what happens is, as you add quencher, if that quencher interacts with the chromophore, and maybe that's a protein, what you would do is uh, this number gets smaller and that number gets bigger, and you would get a line. And this is called a stern vulnerable plot. It's a very important thing in chemical sciences for a multitude of things, but you often don't get exposed to it as undergrads. I don't like that. I think you should see this stuff. So again, this is a stern homer plot, and the slope is called the KSV, uh, the stern homer constant is what that's called, and it's just rise over run. So you know, whenever I do some example, uh, whenever I'm talking about it, the thing I'm supposed to talk about, some count thing, I'll try to give an example. It, we don't need to do anything with this. You don't need to memorize this. I just want you to have seen it before. Maybe we'll do more with it later. Hopefully, get my point. Okay, an example that I liked in the book, I appreciated this quite a bit, and I'm just going to repeat that just for the heck of it, is uh, the example of a derivative. They did a, a, the other example was the derivative of, sorry, this is the derivative of 1 over x. Uh, sorry, what am I putting wrong with me here? So y of x is 1 over x. Uh, you know, I hate seeing this, I hate seeing 1 over x, I always translate that to x to the minus 1. It makes all the calculus way easier. Um, so the question is, what is the derivative? And we're going to use this definition. So the book does this, the book does uh, sine or cosine as well, I thought that was nice, but I'm just going to do one of these, because I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, so what am I doing? I am doing the limit. Delta x goes to zero of um, one over x plus delta x minus one over x over delta x. Now the reason I wanted to do this example is because I often get stuck when I run into this exactly this. I get stuck on the next step. The next step, of course, being to make this 1 over delta x times uh, 1 over x plus delta x minus 1 over x. Uh, limit, sorry, I should have written limit. Um, okay, this over that, is this, is this equal, right? So I get, I get really confused sometimes. What to do is to Google it, or better yet, if this is an exam, plug numbers in your calculator. I just, you know, uh, 1 over 6 minus 1 over 5 divided by uh, 3. Never use 1 or 2 for these types of calculations. I always use an odd number. 
and then plug in the same numbers here and see whether they equate. Just don't ever use one or two for, yeah, that's obvious, right? Um, so, and of course, these are equal, so cool. Um, I'm just saying, if you get stuck in on a simple identity, just use your calculator. Uh, the other thing I always liked about um, these types of questions is that the next solution is to put these two together, and you always do that by multiplying each term by the number one. I just, I just think that's so neat. So again, knowing that the well here, I'll just write it down. The limit, the limit is still there. Sorry, I'm not bending over backward now. Of um, one over delta x. Uh, okay, we multiply x on top, x on bottom, so that's x over. Uh, x squared plus x delta x. Okay, then this guy, you multiply it by uh, x plus delta x, so you end up with the same thing, x squared plus x, um, sorry, x delta x, doesn't matter which way you write it. Sorry, <laughs> this is kind of stupid, isn't it? Uh, x plus delta x. I'm almost out of the room. I'm not sure how much room I have on the camera. Uh, okay, so up here, now what? Um, so I've got, let me make sure what I'm doing. Um, uh, I've got the limit of delta x goes to zero. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I remember how this goes. Okay, so x squared plus x delta x of x minus x plus delta x, that's delta x. Oh, 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 I screwed up, I screwed up over delta x. And that's x minus x minus delta x. Okay. Oh, sorry, my handwriting is not so good. Okay, so this ends up being the limit delta x goes to zero, uh, delta x minus delta x over delta x, which is minus one, um, um, one over x squared uh, plus x delta x. Okay, so that goes to minus one, that goes to zero. Sorry, this is a little hard to see. I've applied the limit, so I've got minus 1 over x squared. There we go. So, um, so there you go, and that's exactly correct. Uh, again, your book gives an example of, sorry, it's the derivative of sine is cosine. I thought that was nice. And of course, the big picture is um, other than trigonometric identities and exponential identities, uh, natural logs, those are, those, you, probably need a table of derivatives. Um, you know, I, I remember that the derivative of sine is cosine, blah, blah, blah. But um, of course, the most important one that you can apply whenever you need it is the power rule. Next to the n, and that is n to the x minus one, uh, sorry, n minus one. And you can see now, whenever I'm confronted with a, uh, with a fraction, I always bring the uh, denom <laughs> denominator, I always bring it to the numerator to the minus one power because that makes this part a lot easier. All right, let me wipe out the board and um, um, we're going to do a, a, a couple more identities and then I'll, I'll show you some more advanced stuff that I think is a lot more interesting. But let me, let me clear out the board here and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So, other things from count one lifetime ago, right? <laughs> For me, that's like 25 years ago. I shouldn't admit that. Uh, okay, what's this one called? Product rule? I don't quite remember. Okay, so we've got f of x, g of x, and this comes up a lot in PCM. This comes up a tremendous amount in PCM one, not so much in PCM two. Uh, again, remember, this is, this is high school stuff, right? Uh, derivative of one, and then permute, permuted. So, yeah, whatever. 
Uh, remember, you can, your book is an example of multiple functions. Uh, more interesting is the chain rule. I think that's a product rule, right? So this is the chain to the product. I'd be really embarrassed if that's wrong. I, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I got that right. So the chain rule is uh, 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 it's a, you have y is a function of another function of x, which, um, okay, that's all fine and good. So the derivative is. Uh, just to make sure that we're not got our heads up our rear, but still change of y, change of x, change in the outer function with respect to the inner function times the change in the inner function with the independent variable, and um, you, you know. So again, this actually comes up a lot in PCM one, uh, and the way to to know that this is totally fine is to just to do that, and uh, we've got df dx. Um, yeah, so so that's exactly correct. So, um, and, and what I like about this, I, 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 I bring this up a lot, is it shows how partials, and this is true, partials are like entities. They're like variables in their own right. They have units, by the way, and they don't have any value. They're technically, numerically, they're zero because they're infinitely small. And another word for infinitely small is zero, but they do have units. And that means that they they are they may be zero numerically zero, but they're not nothing because they have units. Uh, so anyway, um, now this is all fine and good, but of course, what is really more helpful are examples because nothing makes it clear like an example. And I like to give as many strange-looking examples as I can. So okay, I wrote cos of e of the x, and I put a little dash. That means derivative. I'm asking if you see this on an exam or homework, I'm asking what's the derivative. And uh, let's see here. Um, okay, the derivative of the outside function is, is derivative of cos of minus sign. Yeah, minus sign. Oh, my notes are wrong. Uh, the inside stays the same, and then the derivative of the inside function. And then uh, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of its argument x is 1. So uh, I can put okay, um, outer, inner, and then there's technically another inner, uh, the derivative of x with respect to itself. Uh, but that doesn't do anything. Uh, so there we go. And I got one more example. Um, uh, let's do e to the x squared, which comes up quite often. That's Kind of hard to see, isn't it? So let me do it this way. Okay. Now, every time you have the derivative of an exponential, you just write down the exponential again. Just this comes up a lot. Derivatives of exponentials come up a lot. Automatically, just write down the exponential again, and then look at the argument of the exponential. That means put your hand over the e and take the derivative of what you see, and that's two x. All right, so anyway, just some little life hacks there. Your book goes into double derivatives ad nauseum. I don't know why. Uh, the double derivative of this is whatever this is. Take the derivative of that. Duh. I mean, yeah, they usually get more complicated. Uh, here you got a product rule, right? Okay, it's a little harder, but whatever. Now, um, so again, that's that's really, really, really dumb. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna talk about it. Um, but let me just let me just point this out. So double derivatives. Let me just make sure our notation is is um, consistent. So double derivatives would be change with respect to x, change with respect to x of y or f of x, y is f of x, okay, so kind of brainless there. Okay, now let me get you. Now I told you we can make this a little bit more interesting. I know what's in PCAM, especially for those of you in PCAM. Here's a question you're going to get in 346, 344, same class really. Is, is this, this is a question, is this the same as this? So 
So what I have done, sorry, my wife's a little funny. I don't know why it's just today. It's not the best circumstances, obviously. Okay, all right, so what I've done is, is a double derivative equal to this? And the answer, hopefully, is no. You realize no. This is simply the square of a derivative. So, um, yeah, it's just the square of a derivative. So take a derivative, take any of these examples, and put a parenthesis over it and square it. And there's your answer. That is not the same as a double derivative, not even close. Now, hopefully you're saying, uh, you know, no duh. That, right, that, you know, if you're thinking like, well, that seems kind of easy, am I interpreting, interpreting that right? Yes, you are. It's, it's stupid easy. Now let me get you. Let me get you. Watch this. You're going to love this. Okay, what about this? So you're probably thinking, what the heck? I just did that here. Did I? It's not the same. I put little parentheses around this. And that means something. It means something, well, this is what you're learning now. It means something. You probably haven't seen this before. This is not this. Do not get this wrong. These are not the same thing at all. And you are going to run into this in quantum mechanics a lot. All right, so what is that? All right, here's what this is. So let's do this. Okay. The trick is just write down what you're not dealing with. Change in x with respect to y. Right, the next thing is the change in x with respect to y, and that is y prime. Y prime is the derivative. All right, you see, you see how this is different? See, now you got yourself a product. So you now have the derivative of the function times the derivative of the function. Right, you see how, see how the slopes go right to left? Or when you see this, and you'll see this a lot, or from right to left. Derivative, let that multiply by this thing, and then this thing operates on that. Again, if that's confusing, here's what, I'm, here's what you do, right? Now, hopefully it's not confusing. And what's this? Well, this is a product rule. Um, so uh, let's see, I would take the derivative of one function and leave the other one alone. So I will take the derivative of y and make that y prime and leave the other one alone. So that's the derivative squared. That's this. The square, sorry, the square of the derivative. And then, um, again, product rule. Then I leave that one alone. And I then do the derivative of the other guy, which is now it's double derivative. Okay, and let me write this down in a little bit nicer looking. Uh, make it look a little bit nicer. There you go. Now let me do an example, because as I said, nothing helps like an example. Let us do the derivative. Let's make y cosine. So we got. So if you are not sure what's happening, okay, this will make this clear. So what I've got is again just write down the first bit, and then what's this? What's the derivative of the cosine? It's minus sine. So I've got minus sine. Okay, now I've got the derivative of uh, minus cosine. And again, this is a high school deal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> Let me try to know how to do that. Okay. Uh, derivative, derivative. So uh, that would be um, minus sine times minus sine. So that's sine squared. Uh, and then uh, derivative, derivative. Then I leave that alone. Derivative of that. Um, what is that? That would be sine is cosine. So, but I have a minus sine. So that ends up being sine squared minus cosine squared. There you go. All right, notice it wasn't, 
if you just did this, and so that's minus sine times minus sine, that's just sine squared, that's just this, right? So you can see what I mean? If you just said this is the thing times this is the thing, you'd end up with minus sine times minus sine, which is just sine squared. You're missing minus cosine squared. It, it's, you're way off to be one. So this is how to interpret this. Now, if you're thinking like, oh, but when will I know which one's which? Um, if I'm asking you to do a derivative squared, I'll put little parentheses. I have to. If I don't do that, I meant to do that, then I screw it up. And I won't charge you on that. Uh, let's see here. I am uh, almost done. Let me wipe out the board, and I've just got one or two more things to, to do. So we'll end a little early today. And again, apologies for the, you know, what it sucks for me. I'm flying over in Indiana right now. Give me one moment. Okay, uh, folks, just a little bit more. We're, we're almost done. Uh, no reason to, you know, make the first day or the second day particularly difficult. And again, I, you know, if you're half asleep, that's fine because it means you know all this, right? So, um, remember that a partial is basically the limit of delta x going to zero of delta x. Okay, now um, I just want to point out that, and I mentioned this before, but, but you need to be writing this down. This comes up a lot. Uh, it has a value of zero, but it has units. So an example, the change in volume, which comes up quite a bit in people one, is technically zero meters cubed. Don't forget that mass is in kilograms, standard SI units. Moles, uh, N is moles, mass is kilograms, not grams. Standard SI is kilograms, not grams. That's going to bite you in 344, 346. Um, okay, so I already mentioned that's why I'm blabbering about this. Okay, so let's say you have this. What the hell do you do with it? Okay, again, a partial is like algebraic variable. It can be manipulated uh, in all kinds of ways, and you're going to see tons of that. That may not mean much right now, but it will probably next lecture. Okay, but by itself, it's, it's this. It's, it's nothing. It's zero meters cubed for volume. If this thing has value, you must see one of two things happen. One is you've got to divided by another partial. So notice how I'm using the language of like fractions and algebraic variables more so than calculus, right? D, DX, I know normally it's dy, dx, dx, dy, whatever. That's your standard calculus for derivative. Again, that's the slope of one. That's calculus. Notice that before I said, well, let's just divide by another partial, right? That's more like algebra. Now, one of those is a lot easier than the other, right? Algebra is a lot easier than calculus. So, that's what my point is, is that when you see all this count stuff, it's really just algebra. It's just like slightly more complicated algebra. Uh, the other thing is that it's a little, bit more <laughs> a little bit more complicated, unfortunately, is of course an integral. So, the only way to make a partial hat value is to divide it by, um, another partial, because then you have zero over zero, of course, then that can turn into whatever. It could still be zero, it could be infinity, or somewhere in between. So, no value divided by something else. It's a slope, it has numerical value, still could be zero, still could be infinity, or somewhere in between. Of course, if you have a partial, it can also be integrated, and then, of course, it has value. Um, so, uh, what I want to show you. So uh, let, let me point out another example of what that means. Let's say that um, uh, we have a scientific relationship that Mother Nature reveals to us that uh, take like heat, heat diffuses in proportion to the gradient of the heat. So when there's a big differential in, let's say, an object, and like the top is hot, the bottom is cold, the more the differential, the faster the heat flows. That's just kind of sensible, right? We figured that out back in like the 1800s. Okay, so nature tells us this, and we do some other trickery and we get this. 
Uh, and let's say that, uh, so, so that's fine. So that's like, let's say we're modeling the, the diffusion of heat. But, okay, cool, if that's what you want, then you're done. But let's say you actually want the temperature. Let's say that Y is temperature. What you're going to have to do is algebraically manipulate the partials, and then you can integrate. Now you've, now you've got not the change in uh, temperature, but the temperature itself, which is, for whatever reason, that's what you want. So the point of this is to show you that partials, although this is a slope, and you're looking at this like, oh, I don't like calculus, but notice what I did. I turned a slope into an integral. I turned a derivative into an integral. And that's how I did it. So there's lots of this in scientific science. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's one that uh, comes up a lot which is that when I have a function x and, uh, I, yeah, let's say that's, um, let's say it's two functions multiplied uh, u and v, so uh, it's common to see this kind of notation. One thing that, um, I'll talk quite a bit more about this, as much as you're used to calculus being the change in f, the change in x. You can actually just keep the top half, right? Because you don't necessarily need the change in f, change in x all the time. Uh, what you can do is just write out the product rule, and, and you can just um, just do it this way. I'm uh, permuting the way I did this before. So, uh, so there you go. So notice that I've written derivatives. It's just I didn't write the change in f with respect to x. This is how we tend to write these in scientific science. And let me give you an example. I know this is like, so again, these are derivatives. I, instead of df dx, I just didn't write the, the dx part. I didn't write the denominator. You're going to get really, if this is uncomfortable, you'll get really used to it real soon. Now, here's an example what you do with this, and this is something that we do usually within the first week of, uh, second week of PCHEM 1. Change in PV. Now, pressure times volume is energy, so this is the change in energy. This would be the change in energy of like a piston. Because a piston, as it does its piston thing inside your car, the pressure and volume are changing. All right, to do an analysis of this, see, the thing is, what's a pain about this is, how do you talk about the change of two variables when both variables are changing at the same time? Right? That's like, probably never thought about that, but that's like ridiculous, right? Multivariable count. The answer is quite simple. You hold one constant, let the other change, uh, and then you do the opposite. There you go. And that's, that's the same thing as this. Uh, and we will do a lot more with this, and it will be. This, this, you will get very used and comfortable with this the more we do it over and over and over again. Okay, so that's really it. Uh, next class is intervals. Again, Calc 1. It's going to take a couple of weeks till we get to really up until the first exam before we get to some real high level stuff. Uh, but we will, just a matter of time. Again, sorry for the disturbance. I hope this isn't too weird. I hope you can see it fine and let me know if you can't. Um, you know, just stuff happens. I appreciate your patience. And I will see you all on Tuesday next.